Hi, I'm Linda Ann Smith at Studio ABC. Welcome to my response to Cat Hand's Mixed Media Morsels event. This is a local publication that's put out in the doctor's offices, and my doctor's office said they always have a lot of leftovers, so they invited me to take a few, and I did. I'm going to use these in my mixed media morsels. To use this will be working small for me because I really like working large, and Cat Hand had suggested a very small book that she's using, which is great for her, but for me, I think this will work better. I had some paint left over from a portrait I was doing last night, and I thought this would be just perfect uh, to use on this non-gessoed surface. Um, I used a mixture of radiant gels and silk acrylic glazes from Color Art. I spread it out over the back of the magazine and then used a food wrap, a, a cling wrap, on top of it, pushed it together, pushed it on top of the surface, that surface being the back of the book, and I did not gesso the back of the book, so we're going to reveal it and see what it looks like. My camera tripod broke last night, so I'm going to try holding my camera in one hand and reveal this with the other hand, and I hope I just don't make you seasick. Um, this is looking pretty. Not only do I have the shimmer of the color art paint, but uh, when you use plastic like this, it leaves kind of a it leaves a glossy surface because it's so smooth. So this looks terrific. I really like this. I can see this as a background for all those dragonflies that I love to paint. Wouldn't it be pretty? Even if you're an artist and already know how to do some of these methods, it's a lot of fun to go back and be the student instead of the teacher. I hope you'll follow me through this program as I participate. But also, go to Cat Hand's channel and see what she has to offer. I'll list it in the description box below for you. And uh, if you have never done these techniques, it's going to open a door to a wonderful field of creativity for you. And if you have done these techniques, try something new. Try something a little different or let it refresh your memory. When I finish showing you this, I'm going to go over and flip it to the front of the book and try some different kinds of paints on a gessoed surface. I've already gessoed the surface. I'm ready to go. So a non-gessoed surface and a gessoed surface, but I'm not even using the same paints because I want to explore a little bit. And from what I've seen of, of what how Kat has replied on her Facebook, she doesn't have a problem with that at all. Just explore, have a good time, have fun. Okay, I have some extra books here of the same kind. So this is what the back looked like. And this is what it looks like on the other side uh, with the paint. So you can compare those. And it covered quite well without gessoing the surface. No problem. So now I'm going to turn to the gessoed side. I've gessoed the front of the book. Same book I'm using. Gesso didn't obscure the, um, the printed part of the book. But that's okay because I saw with the other side that... The printed part's going to disappear when I put paint on it, so that's not a problem. I don't have to worry about that. I am going to use some paint that I had left over from painting this morning, and uh, I mixed the paint with some gesso. So I'm going to put not only the gessoed surface, but I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, tinted gesso on the background and let it dry before I begin. My personal art journey is all about exploring and experimenting and trying new things. It didn't take a very long time for that tinted layer of gesso to dry, so I'm going to add some of this uh, Americana, and it's called Multi-Surface Satin, and it's in a ballerina color. I'll squirt on a few drops of that, and then I'm going to go to another color. Uh, it'll be Americana Multi-Surface Neon in the pink, neon. And so I'll dribble some of this here and there. And I think the last color that I'm going to use on this is a baby blue, and it's going to be a gloss enamel. So see, I'm mixing different kinds of paints together to see what I come up with. Here it is. Baby blue. And I'll add some dribbles of that around. I apologize, I'm getting out of the camera range. And uh, that's because I'm holding the camera with one hand and working with the other. I will be so glad to get that tripod. It's just a teeny piece of plastic that broke on it. I'll be glad to get it fixed. 
So bear with me while I dribble and play here with the, these three colors of paint. I probably have enough on there to cover the surface of the front of the page. So now I'll go with my plastic wrap. And this is the same plastic wrap that I used on the, the back side of the book. And if it has a little paint left over on it, no big deal. It'll just come off and make a few more textures or a few more interesting areas. I'm suspecting that I put too much paint on here. I want to push it together so it'll kind of run together and not be so splotchy. Create more of a, a unified surface. But, uh, you know, this is an experiment. So if it doesn't turn out perfectly, there's nothing lost. It's fun to play with. And actually, maybe saying turn out perfectly is an inaccurate statement because when you're experimenting what's perfect, you're experimenting to find out what happens. Uh, one of the things that I am learning, and I learn it a lot through the teaching that I do, is I always encourage my students to go with what the paint wants to do. Um, they can have an idea in their heads, but if they will let the paint talk to them and tell them where to go, it usually turns out better. And uh, as you teach, you learn. And so it's driving that home to me as I teach other people. Um, but that's something that I want to do more often in my own art. I've pushed the paint around enough on the surface of this book that it's beginning to blend a little. And I want to make some little spirals, so I'm putting my finger down and twisting. And the, I don't know if this paint is on the bottom or on the top here, but we'll find out. And if it blends in, that's fine too. Um, so I'm, I really liked all the textures on the back side of the book. So I'm trying to make little spiral textures here. And I'll twist this way and then maybe try one backwards, the other direction. You can maintain that uh, right to manipulate it a little the way you want it to go also. My happy moments come when I find just the right, um, the right balance between letting the paint do what it wants to do and me manipulating it in the way I want it to go. Because this needs time to dry, I'm going to wait and reveal this in my mixed media morsels video too. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click that little button and thank you for watching.